so feminism 101 um men and women if you understand what feminism means you will actually realize that um, everyone would would be a feminist would want to be a feminist feminism now has a is like a bad word um, and there's a book I read called feminism is for everybody and that book uh, explains how uh, feminism in the US started and how it then eventually went into academics so it's now sort of cloistered in that area and it's talked about in that area but it's not it hasn't permeated into society so that people don't uh, it hasn't grown up as a value that we should all understand but actually if you understand it and that's what I want to do at AWARE to get people to understand what actually feminism is and why it's good for everybody right because what is feminism feminism is nothing more than equality for all right and it's about understanding why there is no equality and if you understand why there's no equality first of all recognizing the inequalities understanding why it got there then you will immediately see why feminists are asking for change so for example the fact that for for decades and still now you have you heard of the gender pay gap why do they still talk about the gender pay gap because till today there is still a difference between what men and women are being paid now you and I know that in most careers uh, for example I know in the legal profession when we hire young uh, lawyers they're paid the same yes it's true they are paid the same but what the gender pay gap means is that when you start tracking as a society you will find that generally uh, 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 jobs where predominantly women work are generally more underpaid than jobs where predominantly men work you will find that as people start progressing through their careers men get um, tend to get better increments are paid more uh, whereas women uh, will uh, there's something called the maternity um, uh, motherhood um, tax right and whereas when women become mothers uh, employers tend to see them as uh, now people who will be torn between family and work and so they think that they are going to be less um, they assume they are less committed employees and so career progression increments everything suffers interestingly for fathers it's a benefit when they become family men employers start seeing them as more responsible as more committed to the job needing to earn for the family so they then tend to be valued more and they get better progression but you can see that this may mean nothing between two individuals people are forming these uh, views of men and women and this is affecting the kind of career progression that they have in Singapore now let, I'll give you some stats I think we have 50, uh, university grads, it's about 51% women, 49% men. Okay. Look at all the top positions. Do you think it's equal? Do you think it's even 50-50? It's not. Women are fighting to even get a third of a place of a position in, uh, in as CEOs, on boards. Never mind CEOs on boards. We brag about our CEOs, but these are women who run their own businesses. But if you look at boards, it, we are nowhere near getting 30% yet. 30% is important because that's the tipping figure when women start having the kind of voice where they don't feel like a minority. When men start listening to their views as if it's not an unknown thing, it's a weird thing that you're hearing or they discount it. Stat boards are the only place where Singapore Civil Service has conscientiously attempted to do this. They have more leaders and that's reaching 30%. They are about 30% now or 31 or something. But you don't have them in leadership roles. Look at our MPs, look at our ministers. Do you really think, all of us went to school together. Do you really think that the boys were so superior? And you know the answer is no. We were all equally capable. We all did equally capably well in school. Why do you think we don't have a, uh, so, as many women ministers as we have men ministers, male ministers? Why have we never had a women, woman prime minister? Why? It's not just Singapore, it's everywhere in the world. Why? 
if you see these stats, then then let's look at another one. So I've talked to you about career progression. I've talked to you about pay. Let's look at the home. Do you think we enjoy sweeping and cleaning bathrooms and looking after children? We love our children, but many of these things are chores, right? Do you think we enjoy cooking or want to do these things? If you enjoy it, it's different. Then it's a choice. But for household responsibility till today primarily falls on women in Singapore and in many societies. But let's just focus on Singapore. Why is that the case? That's a cultural requirement. Now think about it. Do you not think that that affects how tired a woman feels? How she then, if she feels obliged to do it, how she feels torn between family and work? Who then therefore starts feeling she should give up her career and maybe take a part-time role or a back seat while she gives this? I think if a woman chooses to do that because she wants to, that's fine. But if it's because society has conditioned her to believe subconsciously that's her role or her obligation and she's not really meeting all her obligations so something has to give, then we have a problem. Because if we are all equally capable and we are all equally ambitious as we were in school, then why does caregiving become a woman's burden? Why is it when our parents grow old, it's usually the single daughters or the married wives whose job it is to look after the elderly. And when I say look after, even when you have maids, whose responsibility it is, is it to manage the maid? To handle the, uh, when the groceries are done, to handle the chores that the maid does, how the children are taken to school and brought by. All these things fall on the woman. All of these things contribute to why women don't have equality, gender equality yet. And that's why, that's what feminism is, is, is fighting for. It's fighting for equality for everyone. These things happen because, you know, centuries ago, it was a very much male dominated society. You have to go back into history, those things, I'm not going to go there. But it grew, it developed when men ran societies. And when men ran societies, they created structures and everything happened in a way in which it helped them to progress. The old boys network is a thing. The reason why board members are all men mostly is because it's who knows who, who plays golf with who and which friend you will recommend. That's why you need affirmative action to force boards to find a woman candidate. Because if you come and tell me that there aren't women who are equally qualified, I'm telling you, you are blind. You are just not seeing them. You are under, underscoring their capability. These are the ways in which you start building gender equality. You have to start in small ways. Patriarchy, I say again, is not about men. But it's about how male driven, male-led societies developed a series of uh, thought processes, worldviews, structures in position called the patriarchy, which benefit and help men to progress more than women. Patriarchy, the problem is not just men, it's women too. It's the women who tell uh, boys, ah, they're just being boys. It's the one who tell girls, go and make tea for your brother. It's the, one, it's the women who tell girls, no, 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 you are not cooking for your husband. You need to cook for him as well, you know. Uh, are you looking after your children? Why, you work so late, ah? Huh? You know, it's things like this. Women are also, there are women and many of our mothers and grandmothers' generations who imbibe these views, who have uh, perpetuated patriarchal norms have made things difficult for women. So I say again, it's just not, it's not just men. Men and women who have bought into these norms believe that it is normal to do things these ways, right? Yes, cultural elements are there. But the, when we, I would also ask us to examine what we mean by cultural elements. Why do we think that Asian culture means women are cut out more to cook? Really? I don't cook. Uh, Indira Gandhi was a Prime Minister. What makes you think women cannot do these things? Cultural norms grew from patriarchal norms. They, they shaped the kind of cultural norms we have. But Asian 
these Asian values, Asian norms were also all uh, shaped by patriarchal norms. Now, the Western countries threw off these shackles earlier. If you look at their cultural norms in the 50s, women were told to dress up and be beautiful when your husband comes home and with makeup on and the food ready. And please don't tell him about your day at work because it is he's too stressed after a day at work. You need to be listening to him, get him a drink when he comes home, settle him down, hear what his day was like. This is what white women in 50s America were told, right? It's not different from the kind of cultural norms we grew up with. So that's what by way of saying it's not cultural so much as patriarchy that that has influenced the kind of cultural norms we have. But you have all got wives, mothers, sisters, daughters. Do you want your daughters to feel they don't have as many opportunities, that they're equally qualified, but generally they have to work harder to be heard in a meeting? to gain an advantage. I'll give you simple examples. In my previous job, my boss, who was a man, would, um, and there was a younger guy le leading a different department. But because he was a guy, if he said something, so we were at loggerheads over something, he would come and try and get me to back down because he thought as a woman, I would back down easier. Not because of anything else, because that guy was aggressive and firm and I would stand my ground, but he would seem to think that I should, he would come and ask of me things he wouldn't dream of asking that guy to do. Right? If we, I, I had one, one senior member, not in my team, in a different department, who had the unmitigated audacity to call me doll. I snapped at him midstream in an argument with him and told him off for calling me a doll. He thought it was funny. Right? Till today in so many organizations, women still struggle to be heard and to be taken, given the same level of understanding. If we are firm, you are seen as, oh, she's damn aggressive. Right? But men are seen to be strong. The subtle things you work against as a woman trying to get a job because you've become a mother, you're trying to get pregnant, you know, the fear that you are not going to be taken seriously. So these are the patriarchal norms and thinking that have influenced the way uh, careers develop and people work. That's what feminine is about. It's about trying to get people to see that, hey, this is just not fair right you both decide as a couple who is earning more if somebody wants to take a back seat in a career it should be a choice not an expectation it should not be an expectation till today women carry i told you just now the the major caregiving burden in the home it shouldn't be why should it be both of you should be equally responsible for ensuring that groceries in the house that the house is clean that the children are being educated and well brought up it should be both your jobs not her job, and you as the men are like willing to be led and she will do la. But that requires mindset change. That's what wo the work of organizations like AWARE is about. Getting people to see that this mindset change is important. Another interesting one, masculinity. Masculinity is not a bad word. And a lot of men get very angry when women use these words because they feel attacked, they feel defensive, but it's not. What we mean is that patriarchy has also not served men well. Patriarchy, as much as it has put women in a subservient position in many places, or has created structures that have put women in places where they are struggling to be heard and recognized and seen, it has also forced men into positions where they feel they have to be dominant, they feel they have to be aggressive, they feel they have to be a particular way to be successful to be leaders. Masculinity, these unhealthy masculinity traits are also not working for men. Even in the research has been done that shows that even amongst men, there are top dogs and there are those who are suffering because of these patriarchal norms. Because these masculinities are taught in a way that the boys who are gentler, the boys who want different things in life, the boys who think it's uh, it's uh, who have different interests are made to feel lesser than, 
are made up are sometimes bullied who are made to feel like they need to man up as opposed to being valued for the human being that they are so masculinities are not serving men either the ideas about femininity is not are not serving women and the ideas about masculinities are not serving men so actually and aware we're going to start a big piece of research next year to examine this and we want to do this with men because we need to also solve this problem you have to solve the problem for both you can't solve equality without solving the problem for both genders so if you think it's fair that a woman who is equally qualified as a man should have an opportunity to be a board member to be a manager to be a vp to be a ceo to be uh, in 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 professions where men and women are equally represented and you think your daughter should have that chance then you should be a feminist and fighting for this equality it's in your interest if you think your son who may be interested in being a dancer who may be interested in being a writer or who is not interested in being a uh, army general or a ceo but who is interested in music maybe he's gay maybe he's straight whatever but he has a softer nature he is a more sensitive soul that he shouldn't be bullied that people shouldn't bully and talk down to him because of that if you think that then you're a feminist and you should be a feminist right and that's what we're trying to get at feminism is not a bad word feminism is for everybody